Hey guys, here's the diorama, curse group build, all said and done. Um, this was a really enjoyable uh, kit to build, although it was a total pain in the butt at some times. The build, it's the whole diorama, and the whole idea for having the curse group build. Thank you, Cohen, so much for um, putting it out there for all of us to go ahead and be a part of. Real nice to see how popular it got so fast. Uh, this is the completed, the completed diorama with the figures. Let's see here. Um, there will be um, some detailed photos at the end, so you can go ahead and better lighting to go ahead and see the knocked out tracks, um, see see them better. I'm going to take the advice and added the uh, a bit more uh, more grass to the certain areas from the bits and pieces of it, and completely loaded up the entire left side of the tank. I think, believe in the first video, there was only I think just just a couple, just a couple in here. Um, another thing too with this video, I want to go ahead and answer a couple questions that I received from Hunter Craft. Let's take a look, see here. Um, all right, so basically, how I, I actually got a lot of um, comments on how blend how I blended the camo, the camo together on this tank. Now the way I ended up doing this was after um, spraying Tamiya's dark yellow. Just to me, a dark yellow over it. Um, took hairspray, coated the model, then added the green camouflage. After letting it sit for, I'd say maybe 15, 20 minutes, you could do it pretty much just right after you spray it on. Just took a stiff brush, dipped it in water, and basically just did the hairspray technique on chipping the green. Just the green camo. The, the yellow camo on this tank, the yellow color, excuse me, on the tank isn't chipped at all with the hairspray technique. It is sprayed, covered, and then the green is applied. Then after you get the chipping done with the green camouflage all, all over the tank, you go ahead and seal it and then you use this beautiful piece right here by MIG. Uh, this is a MIG's filter for tan, tan for tra, tan vehicles, filter for, tra, for tan vehicles. This stuff works like a charm. Is perfect. This is if everyone's um, everyone that's commented on how how will the the end up filtering the camo. This alone. And this is number P P two four two. In case anybody was wanted to go ahead and reference that, just this stuff alone did a perfect job. It was a great great. Just you just apply it like a wash. Just go ahead straight from the bottle. Just give it a good shake and just go ahead apply. Wipe away the excess and let her dry. And there you go. And then seal it. And after you sealed it. You go ahead and you have this a perfect. It was it's a bit brighter before. I did add um this is about pre pin washing. Then afterwards you would add the pin wash and then your chipping from here and there. That was one of the other questions wanted answering here. Okay, and the pigment job I ended up doing here for along with along the running gear. All I ended up using was Vallejo's Burnt Umber. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that's for the um, this is it. Vallejo's Burnt Umber and Mig Russian, Mig's Russian Earth with lovely Mig Pigment Fixer. Now I know this stuff when you apply the pigment fixer with pigments, it does darken it quite a bit. So what I did instead was just took some pigment fixer and just lightly brushed it along the running gear, just very just very lightly, just put a nice thin coat on it. Then just took a, a fluffy brush, dabbed it in here, and just tapped it. Tapped it all along the inside of the running gear to kind of give it more of a crunchy kind of a grain to it, and then let it dry. After it dried, just go ahead and took more pigments and just started dusting it, just layer after layer, using, sometimes I, I'm going to go ahead and mix some of the pigments together to go ahead and give it more of a, a natural blended kind of a look and just applied it to the running gear, and that's really all the pigment job I did to it. Um, the pigment jobs that I used for the ricochet marks, here you go guys for a good example. As the ricochet marks on the armor, oops, come on, focus. You can do it, there we go. Ricochet marks on the armor, all that was done there was um, use the Dremel tool, as uh, Cohen actually has the video, on, I'll actually put it in the description so you can go ahead and reference it if you're curious. 
um, just take a Dremel tool and then just slightly drag it across the styrenes. Just not, don't have it sit or else it will melt it. Especially with Dremel tools because they do spin at a ridiculous rate. I don't know the exact number. And after the, this was the last piece that you applied to the model, you, it was the, one of the first to do before applying paint, and then right at the end was the, it was the last ultimate piece to weather before sealing the entire model with a matte coat. And all I used from there was took a brush, dipped it straight into the pigment fixer with Vallejo Natural Iron Oxide, and just simply brushed it on. And there you are. Um, all the streaking and grime effects as you can see on the armor plates that are placed all over the tank are it's AK Interactive's Rush Streak, Rush Streaks, and Streaking Grime. These products are amazing. Um, I know there's um, simply just other ways, more like household ways you can do it with enamel paints, but I just thought, you know what, let's go ahead and give it a try for see all the pros doing it, and I can see why. This stuff is absolutely great. Um, from some videos you see um, a lot of modelers will use a very fine brush to apply it. I simply just use, uh, I'd say, uh, three, and just applied it. Just a, in a sense, there's a thick line, and then as it dried a bit, just go ahead and use a flat brush with some mineral spirit, and just simply shape it out the way you need. And if there's too much excess on it, either remove the whole thing and start over again because it dries fairly quickly with the uh, with the mineral spirit. Or just go ahead and shape it and thin it out, make it thinner, bigger, wherever you want to go ahead and do. And this just works really, really well. I highly recommend this. Um, and with the tracks, AK's track wash. I know uh, Hamaka Barkas used this on his BT7 group build, the buddy build they did with Panzermeister 36. And this stuff here is great. It makes the tracks, gives the tracks a perfect, this is the exact photo of it. It gives the tracks a perfect brownish, kind of a rust appearance to it. These are really, really, really good products. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and thanks for watching, and I'll go ahead and post some pictures. Thank Cohen, thanks again for hosting the group build. See you on the battlefield, guys.